what I'm talking about. It's 100, wonderful. Hello everyone, nice to have you. So if you can please turn on your videos. Thank you so much for joining, lovely to have you. And as a first thing, if you can, if you join via laptop, MacBook, um, please rename yourself. That is in your square, in your video square, there are three dots and there you can rename yourself and please Give us your first name and where you're currently located. So for me, it's Samuel from Berlin, Germany. And please indicate where you're from and what's your name. So first name and location. Wow, it's even so many, I can only read the first name. All right, wonderful. So my name is Samuel and I hope you're doing fine. Thanks for joining the session and thanks for joining the DT Camp 2020. And um, please also switch to gallery mode if you haven't done so yet, so you can at least see half of all the participants. All right, so yeah, make yourself feel comfortable and you will also need some space for moving. Uh, ideally also, um, if, if you have joined by a phone, maybe you can put it somewhere so then you can also move and be more flexible. Um, but otherwise, yeah, make yourself feel comfortable and flexible. And you've probably been sitting for a while. So I would like to sort of change that and start right away. So first things first, I'd like everyone please to stand up and at the same time, still make sure that we can see you in the video frame. Super. <laughs> Difficult. All right. Wonderful. So basically what we're going to do is one person will start, in this case me, and I will make a movement slowly and everyone will copy my movement. And then I will pass it on to someone else and I'll ask that person to just quickly unmute, say a word, and then mute again so that we can see you. And then we will follow you and copy your movement. So we have different leaders at the time. I will moderate that. Uh, and we will all do basically the same movement then. All right. So first you follow me and then I'll indicate already uh, someone that is uh, Vikram in the UK. You will be next when I say so. But first, everyone. Copy me. Okay, now Vikram from the UK. Okay, so I'll do my movement, okay? Yes, and we copy you. Yeah, I hope it is visible with my virtual background though. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. And now we go to Jonas in Leipzig. Okay. Hello. Okay, yeah, we'll just do this. And we continue with Jan in Berlin. All right, so we try something for the legs. So we go into a deep runner's launch. <laughs> Okay, change my legs and the other side.
Well done. And next, Martina in Boston. Hi, everyone. Let's do this. Okay, other side. And then we do the same behind our back. Fold your hands and then out and stretch your chest. All right. And next, uh, Louis from Malaysia. If I got that correctly. Okay, right. Yep, so we're doing a jump start. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, Sylvia from Stuttgart. First, unmute yourself. We can see you. I think she's clapping. <laughs> right, wonderful. I'd love to get to know you a little bit better even. So remain standing. And I will say a couple of different statements. And whenever you can say yes to that statement, then you stand up. And when it's a no, then you sit down, all right? So first, everyone who has participated in a session of this camp already today, stand up. Now, everyone who has more than two years experience in design thinking, stand up. Now, everyone who has led a virtual session of any kind before. Now, everyone stand up who was born outside of Germany. And last but not least, everyone stand up who has read all Harry Potter books. Lovely, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay, everyone, sit down. Thank you. Cool. Wonderful. So lovely to have you. What I'd like to do next is uh, let me just quickly arrange that. I'd like to share my screen with you and talk a little bit about the topic of today. And then later we'll do even more exercises. So let me quickly share my screen here. All right, you should now see my screen. All right, does that work? Wonderful. Okay, so my name is Samuel and um, I uh, work as a, a program lead for the HPI certification program for design thinking coaches in Potsdam in Germany. And I also work as a teacher and coach at the HPI School of Design Thinking. So I've been uh, around design thinking for quite some time and I've been also doing improvisation theater for quite a while. And I'm a huge fan of different exercises uh, that have to do with design thinking improvisation uh, that you call so-called like warm ups. And I'm gonna talk about this um, here, but I'd like to start with something else actually. So if we now sort of dig into the content, what is quite interesting for me is that I don't know how about you but probably lately wherever you are right now you've been asked to sort of socially or let's say let's physically distant yourself distant for yourself from someone else and this is I mean this word social distancing is in in, in my perspective um, really one that is not nice at all physical distancing well okay but social distancing no, it doesn't make sense for me. In these times, we need to stay socially connected more than ever. Um, so the question is, how might we remain socially connected when physically distanced? And one way to do that might be this, but maybe that's not something uh, that you, you can do, even especially if you're sort of uh, remotely um, trying to do something together. So it probably might look more like this or what we're just doing right now. 
And this is great. I mean, the digital world is offering us a lot of possibilities. And still, you might have had like also experiences where you thought, oh my God, this is so tiring. Uh, I'm super Zoom fatigued right now. And yeah, sure, rightly so. I mean, um, the technology is not, let's say, yet maybe uh, capable of replacing human connection. And connection is a core human need. So, however, let's let's say there are ways of maybe boosting up virtual meetings. And this is sort of what this is about. And so the question is how to foster the human connection in virtual meetings by using warm-ups. And yeah, I like to propose that warm-ups might be something that help here. Um, and let's first have a look, some, uh, however, sort of what are maybe the three main challenges with computer-mediated communication that, that we are facing. So the first one actually, and this is a bit of text on this slide, the first one is like the circumstance of reduced social cues makes it harder to, to build trust and report to one another. Even though we can see each other, I can't really feel your presence. And it's also sort of hard to read your, your body uh, language and um, it's, it's just hard to grasp you. Uh, so right now I really cannot grasp the atmosphere here, which, which makes it kind of hard for me to build rapport and to also sort of know how uh, sort of this, what I'm doing is perceived. Second, the lack of physical presence may lead to limited accountability, which in turn leads to limited attention span. And this might even get reinforced through many potential distractors as well as sort of being physically inactive. So I can't really tell what you're doing right now. You, you have the freedom to basically watch a TV series and use WhatsApp on your smartphone as we talk. And I can't really tell if you're doing that or not. So that's like quite difficult then. So in a face-to-face -face situation, for example, you would probably not do that sort of chatting and, and watching a video at the same time while we have a conversation or while I'm presenting something to you. Or if so, I would at least react to it, let's say that. So on number three is in a virtual space, there's higher potential of some participants not being noticed at all times, which might result in people feeling isolated and not heated. So that especially in such a lab group right now, that can happen very easily. So without physical presence, it's harder to feel sort of everyone's presence and, and include everyone, include all of you that you are here right now. So let's see in, in what way warm-ups might be helpful in trying to, let's say, reduce these, uh, these problems or challenges. So what are warm-ups? You, you can think of warm-ups as basically exercises you normally run right before like the main proceedings. So similar as to how you literally warm up before you're doing sports, for example. And in the context of group situations, et cetera, um, it can be sort of a mixture of physically warming up but also, and maybe even more importantly, mentally and socially warming up. So, um, and, and both my experience, as I said, I'm, I've been doing improv for quite a while and also at the Hasso Platner Institute in our workshops and programs, we also include quite a, quite a few of different exercises. So both experience as well as also research um, has shown that in the physical world, at least, warm-ups can have a, a lot of um, positive impact. Um, and when used purposefully, you can do a lot with warm-ups. You can achieve a lot. So for instance, they help increase a community feeling. That's something you can do. Uh, you can, can foster interaction and also support building rapport between uh, different people. And funny enough, all these things you can achieve by using warm-ups in the, in the physical world are exactly like those aspects that we seek to, to, to strengthen uh, also in the virtual world. And um, the question then is how you can also do them in the virtual world. And actually, you can almost do everything also in the virtual world. Of course, it's different, but still, there's a lot of possible. So woohoo, basically, it's, it's a match. Um, so yeah, let's have a closer look at what we can do. And it's very similar to the physical world, what we can do with warm-ups in uh, the virtual world. So when to use warm-ups? So as I mentioned, both in the virtual world as well as in the physical world, it's, it's always important to use warm-ups purposefully. 
Otherwise, people just perceive them as stupid games and, and, and they have no effect whatsoever. Um, and then sort of the following are probably the most common goals for using warmups. Let's quickly go through them. So first, you can use warmups as kind of a check-in. That's basically something we sort of did, just did. I mean, with, with 112 participants, I'm surprised that it apparently takes more than 100. Um, you I, I at least get a kind of a feeling about sort of the, the emotional state, maybe the group atmosphere, and also a little bit about your profile. Sort of you, you can check basically where are people from, or what kind of experience level they are at, etc. So I mean, it's 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 hard with more than 100 people, but it was sort of a check-in and that's definitely something especially in smaller teams and groups you can uh, use warm-ups for then also as a connector sort of you you want to facilitate new and deeper relationships between people um, maybe even like very very different people but also through warm-ups you establish uh, like trust and also the maybe people feel more free and, and open to, to sharing something about themselves and trust basically is the foundation of a good teamwork and good team spirit and good communication too. So that's also something you can was, uh, use warm for. As an icebreaker, uh, probably the most typical world uh, to replace uh, warm up with. Um, yeah, you can facilitate group safety trust here, uh, sort of if you want to put it in words, uh, lastly, you can say transforms ice that can be fear or distrust into safe drink of the water that can be joy and trust. And also, of course, very common an energizer. And sometimes that's also a totally valid goal. It's, it's totally fine to, to just wanting to people like, especially after lunch or so, to just want to get the energy level a bit high, higher. Uh, and, and yeah, that's also probably also one of the most common ones you would use warmups for. Then a mood shifter. Um, so maybe you sort of you want to raise in everyone's heighten everyone's uh, mood and uh, maybe yeah more dedicated uh, atmosphere more involved more trusting uh, you name it and also um, it's a focuser maybe so uh, you maybe people just swarmed out and you would like to have their focus back onto you or on the topic or whatever and here also you can use different exercises to to achieve the following. So like these are different, I mean, you probably very, uh, you, you recognize most of them. I mean, these are also very common goals for physical uh, warmups, but also you can sort of use like the same goals um, and probably there are even more, but these are the most common ones. And as I said, it's super important that you first think about um, the goal, think what you want to achieve uh, and, and then you uh, choose a suitable warmup for that. Also uh, that has not changed in the virtual world. So what do I need then to consider when doing warm-ups virtually? So basically there are four different aspects I'd like to point out here that are very important. Number one is uh, be mindful of the time. So first in the digital world, I mean, sitting in front of a computer for a long time, that's, that's really tough. So attention spans of people nowadays, even in the real world are not that long, to be honest, but still um, you, you, you can control them a little bit better, let's say that. And, and here be aware that the, the attention spans are rather short probably. And also then you should accordingly stick to short time intervals and also don't do the same activity for too long. If, I mean, this presentation might even be considered for too long eventually, but I, I guess it's still okay. But also if you do the same activity for very long, then, then people might lose in focus and attention. So just be mindful of time. And, and I mean, a warm up eventually, uh, both sort of in the physical world as well as in the virtual world should not feel as time constraining, but rather sort of boosting you up and, and feel, okay, now I'm really active again. Second, be mindful of uh, people. So, What's quite important for me is sort of keep a naturalness to it. What do I mean by that? So quite often I, I, I see, I observe people sort of, let's say, artificializing, if that is a word, of, um, a warm-ups in a way that they say, okay, now let's do a warm-up because we want to do a warm-up or something. And that is, it's just not natural. It doesn't make sense really to me. It's also the same like with, with methods and so on. You also don't do like, okay, let's do a stakeholder map. Um, why? Because we want to do a stakeholder. No, it's basically because uh, rather sort of now let's 
uh, try to find out uh, who are like the most relevant people here uh, and map them out and blah, blah, blah. So basically also try to formulate what you want to do more in a, in a sort of method warm up neutral language uh, and, and more having the goal in mind. So now let's uh, everyone uh, energize a little bit or whatever, but not let's say it. definitely now let's do warm up. So I think try to keep it natural. So it's also easier for people to sort of uh, get involved and, and join. Then be aware of what kind of connection is established already. So if you have a group that um, is completely new to one another and they don't know uh, each other, then uh, you, you might want to start with something that is rather easy uh, and, and uh, not a high barrier for people to, to join in. If it's something, especially also in the uh, physical world with touching and everything, and they just got to know each other, it's a bit weird. So you might want to do that maybe later if trust has been built. And that's the same also in the virtual world. So start small, start easy, and then maybe later you can also do warm-ups where that require more opening up and more sort of trust sharing, et cetera. Um, and then also um, you, you might have people who already know each other for quite a long time and where it might feel a bit unnatural to now do a warm up with them. So here it might even be more important to also sort of let them realize why you're doing this and what you can achieve through that. So sort of what's the goal and, and, and what, what are they gaining by doing it? And lastly, regarding the people aspect, also there might be differences in language and culture that could play a role. And you might need to consider, especially also if you have, um, for example, also culture, when I say culture, it's not only uh, cultures about countries, et cetera, but also maybe company cultures, uh, hierarchies that might play a role. Who do you have in, in the meeting? Uh, what is appropriate here? Is there already a certain tonality in there or are there like, first name, last name, how do we uh, talk to each other, et cetera. So you might consider these rules also, they might be important. Um, for example, once in a workshop um, uh, that I actually a participant told me about that, uh, they were forced uh, in, in politics, uh, they were forced to uh, say do to each other. So in German, it's basically speaking to each other with the first name. And that was really, really confusing for them. And that basically hold up uh, the, uh, the whole workshop because they were forced to do that, but they didn't want to, and it's very uncommon to do so. So that confused them a lot. So you might also not want to force something upon people. All right, then be mindful of space. And that's something I noticed maybe here you, I actually should have mentioned anyway. So space announce like the spatial setup if necessary beforehand. If you need, and that's what I just meant, if you need people to maybe uh, join in via laptop and not via phone, for example, you should write that beforehand. Sorry, I, I didn't, um, I forgot. Um, but also um, if they need any kind of materials or like any specialities, uh, you should announce that beforehand because then it just steals you a lot of time if you do that during the meeting. And then also, consider that everyone will join with a different set setup. Even if you ask them, okay, join via laptop, et cetera, you don't know from where they join, what's their sort of, are they sitting, are they walking, are they in the office, are they at home? Uh, so just have that in mind that it might still, it will be a different experience for everyone, even though they join the same meeting. And you can't really control that, to be honest. And also ask for uh, getting rid of, um, yeah, distractions. Uh, for example, I uh, asked them, I didn't, but yeah, well, it's okay uh, with so many, but maybe also ask for sort of like turning your phones off on flight mode or at least in mute, uh, close your email program, etc. And also leave room for information. What do I mean by that? Actually, if you uh, sort of also later on again, you will see my screen and my, my camera frame. And you see, for example, there's a guitar in the background or two guitars actually in a cajon. So if, if you can see that, you get more information about me and this automatically, maybe you also make music, you also play music and this automatically creates sort of some kind of connection between us. And uh, yeah, sure, let's, when Corona is over, let's uh, jam together. Um, but still um, it is, um, it, it also depends a little bit on the context that you do the meeting in. 
So if it's very formally, you might not want everyone to see your comic book collection or whatever. But if it's like a, a sort of meeting where everyone has built a lot of trust to each other already, then I think it, actually it's, it's, it's pretty good to show some information about yourself because that create, creates even sort of deeper connections between one another. All right, and lastly, um, be mindful of uh, technology. So, I mean, there's a lot to say about technology. I don't want to sort of talk about everything, but I mean, one, one thing that is, I think, yeah, sure, that's, that's simple, uh, camera on if possible all the time. Um, and also, I mean, regarding the microphones, now we are with 113 participants. So of course it makes sense to everyone. If, if you unmuted your microphones, then uh, at least one person, probably many people would have some kind of disturbance uh, noises, um, disturbing noises. Um, but still, if you're in a small group, I actually like having the microphones turned on. Why is that? Because otherwise you're missing a lot of, um, reaction in a way. So for example, if you say something and you don't hear any response, that's very unnatural. But if you hear people uh, laughing or reacting or, hmm, or whatever, that is actually very helpful and it's very natural. So you might want to have that. So in small groups, if there are no disturbing noises, I would actually say, um, turn on the microphones. Uh, if, if you do a presentation like now, then it doesn't make sense, of course, but still, if you're sort of talking to one another, etc. And also, I mean, gallery mode, uh, that is Zoom, and Zoom is already um, blocked for some companies due to security reasons. Um, but if, if that software that you're using allows something where you can see everyone at the same time, that's actually quite helpful. Um, I mean, now we have sort of two screens normally with like 49 and 50 people or something. Um, but it's still good to see everyone at the same time. Um, there are rare occasions where it's also good to just see the speaker. And also don't use too many tools, different tools. I mean, you probably know Miro or Mural or whatever. And then also besides Zoom, there's Skype for Business, Microsoft Teams and whatsoever. And um, generally I wouldn't say more than, more than two, two tools is actually too many. Um, because then it also steals a lot of time. You're also dependent on technology working for everyone. Then maybe someone is using Miro in an internet explorer and then it's not working for them, etc. So uh, that's quite challenging. And, and so try to keep it simple if possible and try to avoid uh, using too many tools for whatever activity or whatever yeah, thing you want to do. And then of course, also test in advance. Um, so what I also did is just to see how that like works, et cetera. I um, uh, sort of joined the meeting and currently still joining with my iPad too. So I also see like the other end uh, that is your perspective. Um, so when I can test like screen sharing, all that stuff, um, if, if you do that more regularly still, of course, then it probably you might not have to do that, but still um, it, it might be helpful for you to, to test beforehand. Uh, and then also it might be helpful to have a uh, co-host during, especially, I mean, now 111 people, I, we, we can't really answer your question from the chat. Uh, that's not really possible with so many people, but still, if, if there's like any tragedy happening at your end, uh, also thanks to my colleague, Julian, he's also uh, joining as a co-host currently, and, and he will also um, try to reply your, uh, your, your questions and requests. All right, so basically, so far so good. Um, that's, that's it so far. I stopped sharing my screen so we should see each other again. Hope you're still with me. And <laughs> someone's writing should be ukuleles though. No, it's actually guitar, it's pretty far away. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that was like a couple of words. I also gonna share um, in the um, uh, description about the uh, this session here, an article I wrote uh, pretty much about everything I just said. So you can still read that. And there are also a couple of examples with links to more. Um, and what I'd like to do next is to uh, actually do two or three more activities. So we still have roughly half an hour left. And for the first one, actually, that's, uh, again, something physical. Uh, and what I would ask you to do is within 30 seconds, if possible, 
to first hear me talking and then you, you start uh, going when I finished. Um, grab a roll of toilet paper and a pen with which you can write on that toilet paper. Okay, if you don't have toilet paper available, then just grab a paper, but a pen and a roll of toilet paper, 30 seconds, let's go. <laughs> well. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, here we go. I know it's a very precious object at the moment, but I, I hope you can manage. <laughs> I, I hope you're well equipped. Let, let's wait two more seconds or 10 maybe. All right. Lovely. So, well done. A second thing I'd like you to do is to rip off like one small piece, just one small piece. You, you can sacrifice that. And then try to sketch your favorite animal on that piece of toilet paper. Take a couple of seconds and sketch your favorite animal on that piece of toilet paper if possible. All right, 20 more seconds. Ten seconds. All right, then finish. All right, and then show us your picture on the camera. Let's see. <laughs> Wonderful, you're pretty good. I actually don't know really what mine is. I have no idea. I have <laughs> no idea what mine is either, actually, to be honest. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> it's an animal. Who okay. has the animal, elephant yes. there? Who has the elephant? <laughs> a pretty oh, decent okay. artist over here. Yeah, there, <laughs> from Nuremberg. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so you, so you keep this and consider this as sort of your, your talisman for the upcoming weekend. So this uh, brings you a lot of luck. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's like an opportunity to sort of also involve your offline world. And uh, sort of, you, you can even, while doing that, but now for 100 people, that uh, would be too many, but you can even ask people to sort of uh, do that one after the other and maybe take the camera with them if possible to show you uh, around their, their, their home a little bit so that you can even get an impression of sort of where they currently uh, work and what it's looking like. And that again, sort of brings some kind of connection and on the other hand also it activates people a little bit get them off their screen and get them sort of a bit activated and you can still use it afterwards someone's writing <laughs> please do so if you if you like yes okay wonderful so let's do uh, one more thing before we then also closely get to the last exercise but one more thing so uh, what i um ask you to do is uh, in case you haven't done so yet please um open your chat window and then I will just ask one person to not um, open the chat window, to basically close their chat window again and that person also to turn off their uh, turn on their microphone. 
And you probably know the game charades or activity sort of in, in, in the German version. And what we will do is I will text to everyone and just that one person that had closed uh, the chat uh, function can't see what I just wrote in there. I will write uh, an activity or word or something um, uh, and you will act that out the best you can, every one of you. And that person then has a lot of inspiration, at least 50 people around them to guess actually which word is uh, we, we are looking for. And you just say that out loud. And once you're right, then we actually sort of, uh, everyone starts to clap. All right, I hope you managed, you got that. And the first one I asked to close that chat window is um, Mel Melbourne. Okay, please nod and turn on your microphone. Your microphone. Yeah, one, right. One, so, Try not to look into the chat window and everyone else look into the chat window. All uh, right. Here you go. Here's your inspiration. Start acting it out now. Uh, hang on. <laughs> that was just one person. Here you go. You can guess, smell. Oh, I can't see anyone moving at the moment. Hold on. Yeah, uh, it's just it. refreshing. Ah. Just say a couple of things you think you would okay. do. <laughs> I'm just waiting, but uh, it's only you that I can see, Samuel, so you have to do a very good job because everyone else is frozen. Oh, Hold no. on. Here we go. <laughs> Can you see everyone else with the... Uh... Yeah, no, they're, they're coming back now. So just wait for a minute, maybe. <laughs> maybe someone else who can see, uh, so, sorry, but then I would actually uh, pass it on to someone else. Yeah, uh, pass it on to someone else. Yeah, okay. So make sure you have the gallery view. So I ask uh, Laura from, I think, Berlin. Turn on your microphone and then uh, close your chat window. All right, unmute yourself. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, here we go. Just guess. Yes. Singing? Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was a very easy one. Let's see. We uh, Next, it's uh, Andy from Berlin. You're guessing. Close your chat window. It's a more difficult one. Here we go. Andy? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, looks like uh, you, you um, folding your stuff that, that you wear or tumbling it. Almost, continue. <laughs> um, everyone's doing something different. <laughs> <laughs> so he's also playing a guitar or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, just uh, maybe taking trash out <laughs> or <laughs> go on <laughs> someone is making her hair um, <laughs> um Simon, what, what are you doing this <laughs> so i don't know but yeah i'm, I'm curious to learn <laughs> okay that was doing laundry hey, okay <laughs> okay, one last one. That is uh, Regina from somewhere. I don't know. Regina? Hello. Wonderful. Uh, moment. Moment. Yes. Now I close it. All right. Here we go. Brushing your teeth. Oh, very good, very good, very 
<laughs> very quick. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So basically, um, so yeah, here is like the risk of technology not running very smoothly as we, as we uh, noticed. But still, that's something you can very easily do also to involve everyone, especially if you have a very large group. And uh, as sort of like a final uh, activity, and then I can just maybe maybe talk about one or two more. But as some kind of like final activity, what I uh, would like you uh, to do is, uh, again, very important switch to gallery mode so that you can see a lot of uh, people at the same time. And what you do is you try to very clearly um, sort of um, uh, form a, like a symbol with your hands or something, form a symbol. Um, and what we try to do is we try to align to the symbols so that by the end of it, at some moment, at some point, all of us will basically, without talking, without deciding which one it's going to be, we try to um, like do the same symbol. So that means you look right and left and you try to align to the other symbols uh, and slowly, hopefully, we will all align to the same symbol by having the same symbol eventually. All right. So first, like, come up and you can still change it if you want to align with someone else's symbol. Okay, let's go. Align if you feel like it to someone else's. <laughs> Wonderful, I think we got everyone. It's a heart, how lovely. Cool, thank you very much. Um, so uh, I would like just as a final thing, I would like to maybe mention uh, like one or one or two more um, activities you can do, but not necessarily uh, all, like all do them with you. And then I'll still stay here so you can uh, try to maybe, uh, yeah, about questions going to be tough, but I still going to stay here uh, for a couple more minutes so that you also then uh, be uh, right on time for your next session. But I just mentioned maybe a couple more activities you can do and how they work uh, as an inspiration and then also will send you uh, the links. All right, so basically uh, also something uh, re regarding also your uh, workspace or like the physical space where you're currently in. What's also a nice thing to do is uh, to maybe for like an introduction during a check-in to ask everyone to like send you uh, a picture beforehand. Um, and uh, then you're gonna like maybe picture in your typical day-to-day -day situation currently while you do home office, while you do uh, your work or also what sort of current Corona times mean for you, maybe a typical photo of that. Then you ask everyone to send that beforehand and then you use that as a check-in, which also gives you very nice sort of literally a picture um, of like how everyone is coping with this current situation and how everyone is doing. So that's also a nice way. You can also, as I mentioned, do basically if you have very little people and not that many, uh, you can... Um, also ask everyone to just quickly maybe show you uh, their room to you, or walk around the apartment or something like that. Um, then also what you can do, just an as an example, so basically it's, it's pretty simple to transfer uh, exercises you know from the real world to like the virtual world, you might just have to make some adjustments. So for example, you might know the uh, stop and go warm up, where basically you have one moderator in a group and you start very simply, uh, and then you ask them like to uh, sort of uh, walk with saying go, and they walk, and when you say stop, they stop. Um, and then basically you can turn that around, uh, and then you can continue, etc., and add more to it. Uh, so basically you give them different, um, different things they, they have to do, then you turn them also around, so, so they need to get very active and also sort of walk around everything. And here you can, change that very easily. So I sort of, you can call it stop and sway. So let's maybe for those who are still in here, uh, let's, let's maybe do that. It's, it's very simple. So whenever I say sway, you basically do this. Whenever I say stop, you freeze. Okay, sway. Stop, sway. Stop. Okay, that's very simple. Now we turn around the meaning of those two terms. So whenever I say sway, you stop. Whenever I say stop, you sway. 
Stop. Stop. Ah, got you. <laughs> Sway. Oh, now I failed myself. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so now those two stay the other way around, but we uh, we add two more. So what we add next is uh, wave and stretch. So wave is this, and stretch is this. All right, and we still have stop and sway the other way around. All right, sway. Stop. Stretch. Stop. Wave. Sway. Wonderful. Now we turn around the meaning of those two also. That means when I say wave, you actually stretch. And when I say stretch, you wave. All right. So it's four. Let's see. The other way around. Stop. Sway. Wave. <laughs> Stop. Stretch. <laughs> okay, we add two more, the last two, so that is clap and stand slash sit. When I say stand sit, then you basically stand up or you sit down. Okay, let's see how that works. Uh, so the other four stay the other way around. Let's see if I get confused or not. Stop. Clap. Uh. <laughs> Do we have clap? Yeah, we do have clap. <laughs> Sway. Stretch. Stand, sit. Stand, sit. Stop. Sway. Okay, well now last round, we also turn around the meaning of those two. So when I say stop, you sway. So when I say sway, you stop. When I say Ah, uh, when I say wave, you stretch. When I say stretch, you wave. When I say clap, you stand or sit. And when I say sit or stand, you clap. <laughs> wave. Stop. Sway. Stand, sit. Stop. Stand, sit, stand, sit, stand, sit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wonderful, thank you. All right, that's basically like one kind of um, adaption you can do and it's sort of taken out of, um, yeah, like also physical exercise and you can also try, and you can also come up with others. I mean, you can do that as you as you see fit. And uh, also an opportunity sometimes if, if the room is uh, sort of too, too, or the group is too big, um, then you can also, um, Use, uh, if you're using Zoom, you can also use breakout sessions. So we can uh, have smaller groups, smaller teams, sometimes also pairs. Um, so, so pairs, for example, there's a really lovely exercise. I just can't describe that right now. Um, that uh, it's called one, two, three. So basically in pairs, you count until three alternati uh, alternating all the time. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three. So find a rhythm, find a good pattern in, in couples. Uh, and then you you ask like uh, the participants to then replace um, uh, number one with a clap. So then it's two, three, two, three, two, three, and then maybe number two with the snap. So then it's three, three, and sort of counting until three, like all the time alternating. So it's like done in pairs. Uh, and, and that's also something that sort of heightens like focus, brings back focus. And you can even use that then also because people will fail doing this exercise and people normally hate to fail. And what you can do also, you can reflect that exercise sort of uh, trying to create like a failure open atmosphere. So you can say, okay, next time you fail, you, you basically fuck it up. You, you say, okay, um, next time you do that, celebrate it and, and embrace failure. So um, like that's also another exercise you can do. And, and for all these exercises, again, it's important to, 
sort of frame them in some way. So what you can do is you can do that before you do the warm up. You say why you're doing it. You say be transparent with the goal. Why you're doing this exercise and then do it. You sometimes can also just sort of do it and then afterwards reflect on what you just did and and sort of what participants are taking away from it. But it's always important to have this framing. Just please don't just do warm ups for warm ups. Hey, let's do a warm up. Why? I don't know. I want to do a warm up. Okay, if you're with friends and you just enjoy doing that, of course, that's for fun's sake. But especially in professional settings here and there, this is um, it's, it's not working. And it's also, I mean, warm-ups can be way more than a game. And please sort of uh, also use them in such a way. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for, for joining and attending. I hope you uh, got something out of it. In the description of this session, I will uh, add two or three more links. Also an article I wrote about it that is pretty much sums up the content I just addressed. And yeah, thank you so much for joining. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Samuel, sorry, uh, just, a, just a quick question. Where can we see the extra content, the links and the articles? I didn't catch that. I will integrate that in the description of uh, this session. So on the webpage of DT Camp, uh, there I will integrate it there. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much. You're Wonderful welcome. session. Thank you. Samuel, will it be posted on the YouTube? Sorry? Will, will the session be posted on YouTube or, the, or on the, cha the channel of the camp? Um, I think as it was sort of streamed live, I think uh, that should be possible. I think it's also recorded then. If so, I can, I can do that, yeah. I will also then put the link in the mm -hmm. description. Because I missed the first, I missed the first uh, quarter of an hour. It would be great to share with the team as well. Okay, yeah, sure, can do. Thanks. Is there any improv classes that you would recommend? Uh, well, um, it, it depends where you are. I mean, at the moment, I'm participating uh, also in an online improvisation theater class that is uh, in, in, well, it's from a Berlin group, but basically you can participate from all over the world. It's uh, called the gorillas, like, like the animals. And they are pretty good. And they also offer international um, formats. So they have brilliant English speaking teachers from Canada and Israel. They're really, really good. So I can recommend them. But basically, in every bigger city, you find a couple of groups. If you just Google improvisation theater and then the city. And, and um, there's also improvisation theater camps. Uh, currently, it's hard to participate in one. But normally, those are also a lot of, uh, you get a lot of inspiration there. Thank you so much. You're welcome.